Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with, if I could choose only one work by composer X, it would have to be work beta. Well, composer X is Martineau. You've been talking about getting to Martineau for a long time now, and we finally got there. Work beta is Symphony Number no. 6, Fantasy Symphonique, his last and culminating symphony which is really his most characteristic work. I mean, certainly of a type of his most characteristic works. You know, when a composer is that prolific, and Martin, who was that prolific, and wrote that much good music in a variety of styles, actually, that evolved over time, it's very hard to pick just one piece. And this is really, was a tough choice. It was a very tough choice. I, I could have chosen his opera, Giulietta, because Giulietta is generally acknowledged to be his operatic masterpiece. He wrote 16 operas. And, and also the work that sort of encapsulates his, his dreamy, quasi-impressionistic, um, phantasmagorical musical style. So I get that. I really do. But the problem with Giulietta, as far as I see, is a practical one. There's only one really wonderful recording of it, a studio recording that Superphone made around 1965 in kind of boxy stereo. And, it, you know, it's a very good performance, but the sound isn't ideal. And the only other recording of it, the complete one, was on Erms, conducted by Sebastian Weigel. And I just checked to see if that's still around, and I don't see it. I see it listed on Amazon for like $140 which is just ridiculous. And so I, I can't really go for Julieta, and I'm not going to make people crazy about it. You've got to be able to follow the text, which is bizarre beyond belief and wonderful, don't get me wrong. So I, I think we really need to look at his orchestral or instrumental pieces. Now, he wrote scads of fabulous chamber music and scads of fabulous orchestral music. And the problem with orchestral music is that he himself described his style as sort of a concerto grosso type. And he wrote wonderful concerti grossi and pieces in indefinable categories. I mean, there are the parables, there are, you know, the, 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 Oh, you know, those other things, the frescoes of Piero della Francesca, and then all the concertos, millions of them, 20-something of them. There's concertos for every possible instrument, for combinations of instruments, for multiple instruments. There's the double concerto for two-string orchestras, piano and timpani, which is kind of like the Bartok music for strings, percussion, and celesta goes to Czechoslovakia or France. I mean, it's really, it's an extraordinary feast of marvelous music. And the symphonies, quite frankly, um, feature from his American period exclusively. He wrote them all in a bunch, numbers one through five anyway, in the 1940s. And then there was a big long pause and number six came out. And I think number six has to be the choice because it is a culminating statement. It really is. It was written you know, shortly before his death um, for the Boston Symphony. It was fabulously recorded by Charles Munch and that orchestra, and it's been given a lot of really fine recordings since. But what really seals the deal for me is not so much that it, it identifies Martin as a symphonist, but rather that the piece has, first of all, quotes Giulietta, which is kind of important, his major, major work, which I think is great. It has a lot of things in his style um, that that appear for the last and I think most uh, most significant way. It's a deeply personal work. It is fantastical. The opening with its buzzing insect sounds. The second movement also sounds like buzzing insects. And and the, the quiet ending, the mixture of what sounds like Czech folk music that pops up in strange circumstances, in odd places. The form is completely improvisational. It doesn't really relate to anything that anyone else did, aside from the fact that it has repetition of certain sections so that it has a real shape, it, it has a definitive shape, but it, you can't relate it to the traditional symphonic form particularly. I mean, Martin, you called it a fantasy for that reason. And I think it's that fantastical element that really is so important. There isn't anything in the repertoire that sounds anything like it, but because it has elements of his earlier styles, uh, 
we could say to the evil god Cancrozans, who wants to destroy all of classical music, but for one work per composer, that yes, this is Martineau's most typical or characteristic work, a culminating work, but there's so much else that takes elements that appear here and develops them more fully. We don't want to lose all of those concertos. We don't want to lose the fantastical tone poem-like orchestral work, the triptychs that he wrote at the end of his life. We don't want to lose the memorial to Lidice. We, it, it's, just, it's just an incredible amount of stuff. There are ballets, and again, like I said, there are the operas. We deserve to hear all of them. I, is it me, or is Martin a thing now? I don't know. You see, we're living in a little bit of a bubble because you all have uh, are here because of your enthusiasm, and we share that. And so Martin New gets very good press on this channel, but he's being recorded like crazy by the record industry. And I wonder if anyone out there in the real universe listens to any of this stuff, because we know how great it is. It's phenomenally fabulous music, but who gets to hear it? I, it seems to me he has taken his place over the past couple of decades in the pantheon of truly great classical composers and not just great composers coming out of what was then Czechoslovakia. Uh, he is a great 20th century composer, right up there with Bartok and Shostakovich and, you know, from the first half of the 20th century. And I think that, um, I really think that he deserves to be recognized as such and performed more frequently because he's also a crowd pleaser who never writes down to anybody. There's absolutely nothing about his music um, that is pandering. It's always fresh, always original, always exciting. And there's tons of it, tons of it for us to enjoy. So let's hope we continue to enjoy all the tons that there are or is or whatever. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.